G'day, I'm Ash. I hope you're all doing fantastically well and welcome to 2020. Happy New Year, Merry Christmas, all that good stuff. Welcome to the Roaring Twenties. Goodness me, we're truly living it now. Uh, in 2029, there might be the big depresso. <laughs> anyway, let's not read too much into the future with the world going to absolute crap at the moment. Today, we're going to be flying the Australian... Uh, Spitfire Mark VC drop. This is a skin you can get on the marketplace. It looks absolutely stunning. I don't know why, but when I put an Australian skin or I put an Australian decal on an aircraft, I tend to do a lot better in it. Uh, but anyway, one thing I'd like to see is more New Zealand-based uh, skins, maybe for the, the Corsairs and, and uh, some of the F6Fs and that kind of thing. Anyway, obviously it's been a particularly turbulent time for Australia, so let's just jump into it. We'll get into some of the details in a moment. It's been one hell of a ride, and no, I'm not in a bushfire affected area, I don't have to evacuate, I don't have to do any of that, I live uh, about an hour and a half out of Melbourne, in the eastern suburbs, and in 2009, when the Black Saturday bushfires happened, I, where we were living at the time, up in northern King Lake, um, our house got caught up in the bushfires there, I'd spent three days at school, I slept and stayed at school for three days straight until my mum was finally able to, you know, come and pick me up. Which is an utter nightmare. Um, but that's what you had to do. Like, we had nowhere to go uh, and, and do that kind of thing. And with one quarter of Australia burning right now, I don't know. Yep, yeah, that's one quarter. Considering that two-thirds of the country is not necessarily inhabited, one-third lives, basically, ever, all the population lives around the coastline, You've got a lot to contend to when it comes to actually, I guess, fighting fires. Now, a little bit about myself. I am a volunteer firefighter with my local brigade. I actually serve in two different brigades, depending on where I'm living at the time. Sometimes I live out my, with my grandparents, uh, and other times I live where I currently am, where the setup has been. And in 2009, my, my grandparents' place was completely engulfed in flames. However, it was one of the parts, of, well, it was just a magical wind change at the last minute. It pushed away from basically wiping out the town. However, people in Marysville and Upper King Lake and, and Buxton and, and Alexandra and just areas up that were heavily in the bush, completely and utterly gutted. And we're seeing that across New South Wales, Victoria, Northern Territory, even Tasmania's got fires. Tasmania's a little island off the bottom, by the way. You know, Western Australia, where all the big mining companies are, there are massive fires there. In, in Adelaide, just outside of Adelaide, there are roaring fires that are encroaching and, and approaching the city of Adelaide. So it's not just a, you know, isolated sort of incident. It is more than just that. And I feel really, really sort of abound diligence to help my local communities. And... Granted, I'm not necessarily uh, qualified to do bushfire fighting, but I'm still helping out doing what most of my training has been involved for, which is motor vehicle accidents and light structure fires. And I've seen some shit. People don't really realise how much you go through, uh, or how much you see, when you're attending a motor vehicle accident. I'm not going to go into details, but it's particularly gruesome. I hate it. I have to see therapy for it. You know, it, it scars you mentally, and, you know, police officers, emergency service personnel across the world will understand that. No matter who you are, or what you are, or what, what kind of life you're in, what kind of mental state you're in, you'll never have it as bad as someone who has seen multiple people mangled and tangled within a vehicle. But uh, that's what I'm going to say about that. Yeah, but one quarter of Australia is on fire, and two quarters of the population live around the coast, because two quarters of the place is in in inhabitable. Well, it's not in inhabitable, it's just no one's really bothered to build there. So there's that. I'll just change tune just for a second here. This Spitfire is just, oh, I love the Spitfire. Possibly one of my most favourite aircraft ever. Spitfires are just so gorgeous, they're just... It's just full of fun. There's a Spitfire below me somewhere. I'm only at 2,800 metres. I'm expecting them to be at about 6,000 by now. Ooh, G55. Now we're going to have some fun. 
Sing does have four 20mm Hispano cannons, but uh, can it necessarily put out a fire? Don't know. Anyway, about two weeks ago, just before Christmas, a couple of 109s, I uh, got called to a, uh, a call-out that uh, was particularly, I guess, annoying. A four and a half metre tall uh, running grass fire that was running north to west. Um, also, uh, and the wind had changed, blowing it north to, to... Basically, we had set up a burn line, we'd started burning it off to try and get it away, and it, well, it backfired. It's a 190, that 190 looks like he wants me, he does. Oh, hello. Pull away, pull away, pull away. Oh, that's gonna hurt. We're gonna need that later. Alright, let's start making a beeline back for base now. Because when we're, we're clearly not going to survive any more hits, our engine's not going to survive either. Okay, you don't go head on with the Fock Wolf. That's not what you do. Alright, the problem is he's got all the energy and I'm now completely and utterly crippled. Come on, roll around. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, around, 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 come on, come on. Flaps, 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 flaps. Roll over again. Continue doing so, pull, 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 pull the flaps. There we are, that's how you deal with a fuck wolf. The problem is, his friend will come in and absolutely annihilate me. That's one of the things I hate about War Thunder. You can never, ever, you know, just have a decent dogfight with someone. I want to give some perspective more Australian land right now is burning than exists in the whole entire country of Belgium. The smoke is causing health problems not just across Australia but also in New Zealand 2,000 kilometers away. You know we've had a huge amount of animal population being devastated and and, and just completely uprooted. You know and the, the human, you know, cost and, and lives is, is only expected to raise, uh, you know, rise as, as the weeks go on. You know, one-seventh of the state of Victoria is currently on fire. You know, the fire front in the state of New South Wales is so long that it could go from Sydney, and will go from Sydney, to Afghanistan. And let's put that into perspective there. You know, the... Fires are also being predominantly fought by, um, you know, volunteers. You know, the Australian government is just in complete utter shambles. You know, they're not willing to discuss anything because apparently it's a climate change issue. You know, and apparently, you know, we're not supposed to... It's a political issue that should, be, that should not be discussed at this time. And my thoughts on the climate change is, well, you know what? It is down, definitely down to... A contributor of human factor. He's gonna absolutely nail me this G fifty five. Yeah he did. I fucking can't stand G fifty fives. I don't even know how to get around them. Come on. Fuck you, G55. Come on. Can we get him? Can we get him? And we will be able to with some clever maneuvering here. Right, let's cut the inside just a little more. Fuck you, dickhead. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. Oh, yeah, that's going to hurt. Come on, put the fire out. The airfield's just over there. Come on. Yeah, not exactly quite like a fire front, huh? But we're still on fire, hey? <sighs> Let's be real here, climate change is a fickle subject. It is something that needs to be discussed later after the fact of the whole entire situation. At the, at the moment, the situation is increasingly getting worse. So now it's not the time to be discussing that. 
It doesn't help that the Australian Prime Minister at the height of the crisis went on holiday to Hawaii around Christmas time, which at first his office, you know, denied, and then obviously, you know, he tried getting back as quick as he could. But anyway... Also, the uh, New South Wales Emergency Services Minister also went on holidays amidst the, you know, amidst of this. And the Prime Minister has declared that the country should take to heart its brave and courageous cricketers who are playing against New Zealand. Well, I can tell you this much. Nobody's watching the fucking cricket, that's for sure. <laughs> Everyone's too busy, you know, actually giving a toss. You know, uh, even Nick uh, Kyrgios, uh, the famous Australian tennis player, has actually done something particularly good for once, and he has, you know, asked of the particular, uh, you know, tennis clubs that uh, they start maybe doing a tournament fundraising match or something like that. So, you know, it, there are things going on. There are other content creators who are raising money. The Red Cross is involved. Huge amounts of volunteers from other countries. We've had, you know, water bombing aircraft just continuously going. And, the, you know, it is true that uh, we, you know, Australia has bushfires every year, but the, ski, the sheer scale of this is even unprecedented. As well as the fact that the fire season is now extremely long, they're predicting that the fire season will last until April. We've got another three months of this yet, if that's the case. You know, you know, it's longer than, you know, the typical one and a half months. You know, and, and, and typical preventative initiatives such as backburning, where you back, basically burn back in towards the fire front, hoping that, that would, you'd burn back all to mineral earth. That way you've got a bit of a fire line, and when the fire comes through, rolling through and hits the edge of that material, uh, that being grass, trees, leaves, leaf litter, um, other, other particular flammable objects, it has nothing to burn. But it is too dangerous to do that. The devastation in Australia far exceeds the Amazon fires and the California fires by many orders of magnitude. And I remember when everyone kicked up a fuss about that bloody church in France, Notre Dame. Yeah, that, that that is like a pale comparison. Everyone was crying about that. It's, oh my goodness, it's a yes, it was a beautiful building, but I, you know, when you have you know an expectation that the smoke won't recede in areas where people live, in parts of Sydney, breathing the air is equivalent to a pack of cigarettes a day. You know, many public buildings in Sydney and even the capital Canberra. Uh, have had to close because you know smoke is concentrating in the ventilation systems and setting off the you know the building fire systems. There is a huge amount going on. You know the average temperature of the country has been above forty degrees Celsius, which is about one hundred and five Fahrenheit. As as Ed Mack says on Twitter, it is not simple to understand. We are heading into territory that is beyond words can adequately convey. The scope of this is epic, and it should chill everyone to its core. Uh, obviously, the defence has been brought in to evacuate people from Malakuta. That happened two days ago. Uh, the Australian Defence Force has been called in to do a whole heap of tasks. The Governor-General yesterday signed off a bill to allow reservists to be called up to help out in logistics and maintenance roles and infrastructure and communications. Everyone is doing hard work. And I, I, my heart goes out to those who have lost their homes. I know that pain. It happened to me in 2009 with the Victorian Black Saturday bushfires. And they're only expecting it to get worse. You know, there, there's anger. There is a lot of anger at people and at politicians. But w Australians, we're tough. You know, we do a lot of jobs without complaining. We get on, we get we, we get down, and we, you know, we get on with all the work. And as a firefighter, this terrifies me that it's going to happen down here again. You know, it's burning at such ferocity that it could possibly escalate into a, in a threatening situation where it might threaten the city of Melbourne. Granted, as I look outside today, it is completely covered in smoke. You, I couldn't breathe outside earlier. It, just, it was just, it was that bad. There is a lot going on, and a lot of organisations, and a huge amount of infrastructure and, and logistics that are going on. And those of us that are left, who aren't going out to fight fires, have to protect the existing community from existing threats as well. House fires, um, motor vehicle accidents. Anyway, 
I just thought I'd, I'd tell you all that. That's a lot to get off my chest. I am currently feeling the... I'm currently feeling it. it, it it's it's getting to me. Um, mainly because I know how much this stuff can affect others. And I guess that's why I'm telling you this. Anyway. We'll be, we'll, we will resume to regular content another time. I, I, I'm sorry for ranting and rambling on... You know, not showing you any particularly good gameplay. But uh, I guess that's just the end of the story. And I mean, there was some some guy who was drunk in a car, driving his car. You know, he had just received news that his family's house had burnt to the ground. They were all trapped inside. He was the only one surviving from his family. He had driven probably 300 kilometers before he got picked up by the cops. He, he wasn't over the limit then, but he must have continued driving uh, until he, well, slept on the road. Knocked himself out, knocked himself unconscious, hit a tree, he had a cigarette. That cigarette started a, a grass fire. You know, he's now he's now facing, you know, lifetime jail or 10 years in prison and a $10,000 fine. But he's lost absolutely everything. You know, what do you do? All right. There'll be more content resuming tomorrow or the next couple of days. Uh, 2020 should be a fantastic year, I hope. I hope. But anyway, that just excuses the fact that uh, there hasn't been as much content recently. I'd love to put, put out more, but at the moment, focus is finding work and obviously helping out my communities where I can. So uh, I hope you can understand that. All right. Thank you very much. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.